So here is the question about dispatchability that I asked at the end of the previous part of the lecture. Hopefully you realize C isn't it because there will be differences in efficiency of the storage system because we have to convert energies from one form to another during that storage process and extracting from the storage. So the name of the game is to convert the least number of times. And hopefully you see that A is definitely incorrect. You are not storing electric energy in the batteries. Batteries store chemical energy. So what's going on here is first the photovoltaics convert light energy to electric energy at a low efficiency. Then you convert that electric energy to chemical energy in your batteries at a low efficiency. And then you convert that chemical energy in your batteries back to electric energy again at a low efficiency. So this will be hugely inefficient compared with CSP, where you are converting light energy into thermal energy once, and then that is being converted into electric energy in your uh, turbine and generator. Let's finish up this lecture with a quick look at wind power. So in wind power, we have moving air, which is our energy source. It is the kinetic energy of that moving air that we are going to convert into electrical energy with a wind turbine. So that will go through an area that is swept out by the blades. So in the case of a horizontal axis turbine, there's going to be some radius of the region swept out by the blades. And now let's consider just a packet of air and the kinetic energy that it has. So that'll be a half mv squared as always. That packet of air has some density rho and some volume v, and so that m is just rho v. And now consider the volume of air that passes through the turbine blades in some time delta t. It's going to be a cylinder of radius r and of height v delta t. And so that gives us a volume of air passing through the turbine blades each time delta t. If we could transform all of the kinetic energy in that air into other forms, then this would be our power, where the delta t's cancel and we get this expression, which importantly is proportional to v cubed, the speed cubed. So the, the available power scales very quickly with increasing wind speeds. The key thing here is that the power availability scales as speed cubed. This expression, however, is overall not quite correct because we are assuming that we can transform all of the kinetic energy of this volume into other forms, and that is clearly impossible. Think about what would happen if we did. The air would arrive at the blades and would all stop, and now we would have stationary air around the blades. Clearly this air has to keep moving and get out of the way so that more air can pass through the blades. The derivation of this is complicated, but leads to a better uh, approximation of the maximum possible power extracted by a wind generator called Betz's Law. And it says that the actual maximum is 16 over 27 times the simple power estimate we got above. That still involves a lot of idealizations, such as that your generator has an infinite number of blades and various other approximations like that. And more typical values for actual wind turbines is around 0.4 of the simple value that we got. So remembering that the power availability scales with speed cubed, we get enormously more power on average out of windy locations than otherwise. The demand for data on this has led to very nice wind power databases. So a really good one is maintained by the Technical University of Denmark. And here it is, this is their global wind atlas. And it's very nice if you want to say, check out Cape Breton, which has some fantastic wind power potential. In fact, some of the best onshore wind potential in the world. For example, up here we can click and we can see information on this location I've clicked 
and we can see that we have about 2,450 watts per meter squared. That's comparable to solar power availability in the best desert locations. And it's things like this that have led to Nova Scotia being sometimes called the Saudi Arabia of wind power. As with many renewable sources, capacity factors are complicated and difficult to estimate for wind and are very variable. So looking at typical figures, one sees capacity factors between 15 and 50% for wind facilities. And that's because it depends both on how dependable the wind is at the location, but also very crucially on the match between the choice of turbine and peak wind speeds. Let's make that clearer with an example. Suppose we have a location where wind varies between 3 and 15 meters per second, highly variable, and we're assessing whether we should go with a small turbine or a large turbine. The small turbine will generate power at all wind speeds. It really doesn't generate much more at 10 to 15 meters per second than it does between 5 and 10. On the other hand, the large one could be very efficient at mid-wind speeds. At low wind speeds, though, it would barely move. And at very high wind speeds, because of the wind shear on its large structure, it might have to feather its blades and stop generating power. So, the small turbine might get a capacity factor in excess of 90%. The large one might only achieve 20%. However, the large one would produce much more power when it's producing power and overall might end up being the better choice despite the low capacity factor. These things are complicated and involve difficult engineering decisions.